Hey guys and welcome back. So originally I wasn't planning on doing kind of a part three to this series but a lot of you guys asked me to do some kind of GUI for the Sudoku and make it into an actual game. So that's what I did this morning. Probably took me about two hours to get everything working with the bugs and everything. So I'm not going to be doing a full tutorial on the GUI but I will be walking through how I kind of made this and then providing all of the code to you guys via my website techwithtim.net. Quick reminder, if you didn't already see, you guys should definitely go follow me on Instagram at tech underscore with underscore Tim if you guys want to get exclusive updates on what's going on pretty well in my personal life and kind of sneak peek into projects uh, and all that. So anyways, let's talk about this GUI. So just a reminder, I'm actually uh, on my website editor right now. So you guys, I have all the code up there, so you'll be able to download it right as this video is uh, out. So anyways, essentially the way it works is you can kind of select, what do you call it, different squares here. And these are obviously the squares that come default with uh, like the beginning game. So let's say I want to put one here. I can start by penciling it in by just hitting whatever key on my keyboard. And then to confirm that I actually want to place that there, I can hit enter. And if it is actually valid, it will let it go there. Now, for example, if I try to put one, say here, well, that conflicts with this one and this one. So if I go to the square and I hit enter, then you can see that it simply clears that square and gives me an X saying that I got that wrong. Now, I don't really have any system where if you get a certain amount of X's, you just lose. It just kind of just show you that you messed up that many times. Uh, and it works like this. This just works. Now, obviously, I'm not going to play the entire thing because that'll take a second. But once you eventually get down to the point where there's only um, like like you've completed the board, it'll simply just say like you won uh, and then you're done. And then obviously keeping track of how long you've been playing in the corner here. Now it's neat because you can kind of pencil multiple things in. They go in the top corner in gray. And then when you're ready to confirm them, you can hit enter. And if it's correct, obviously it will go in the right square. Uh, so yeah. So that's how the GUI works. What I did to use this was just make a very basic kind of pie game, um, like GUI, I guess. Um, some people said to use Tekinter, but I was just, no, I'd rather use pie game. And I'm just using the script that we wrote in the last two videos. So this whole thing here to actually see if when I put something into the board, if it's a valid solution or not. And the way that I'm doing that is by doing two things. I'm first making sure that using this valid function that we wrote, that it's valid to go into the board. If it is, then what we do is I call the solve method on that board and then it checks to see if we'll be able to actually come to some kind of solution based on what we just put in the board. And then based on the results from true or false from these functions, um, that'll determine whether it allows me to put that in or not. So up here, all I've done is imported that uh, file. They're in the same directory, obviously, and then just use the method solve and the method valid to do that. Now the starting board, gets stored in this main grid class uh, and this is like what you would modify if you want to change the starting position i didn't really go too hard with this gui and like there's a lot of things to be improved on this is just kind of the standard like it works it's functional gui um because i don't want to spend too much time on it but if you want to modify the actual board you could do a, have a method that randomizes this and randomly picks some kind of solvable state or you could just uh, modify it by hand and change some of the numbers so yeah, that's essentially how it works. We have two uh, objects here that I'm using for the game. I have this grid object and or class, sorry. And then I have this cube class and essentially the grid holds a bunch of different cubes in like a row column structure. So actually in this identical structure, just holding cube objects. And then each cube object, let's go down to these actually, have all of these different values. Um, so it holds a temporary value, which is the value that kind of gets penciled in at the top. If you ever played Stoko before, that's how you do it. And then uh, the actual value, which is like it's set, uh, it can't be changed once it's that value. So you'll notice once you actually get a valid value in the board, you can't change that, right? And that's the way it should be. And then obviously the draw methods, well, this draw method is just going to actually draw that little box, little square to show you that it's selected if it is selected. And then it will also uh, draw the number on that square. I have set and set temp, which will do obviously what they say there and then a bunch of methods for board like click which will simply return the position of the cube that we clicked on uh, so a little bit of math there is finished we'll simply just make sure that uh, or it'll check actually if there's no empty squares left in the board and then we have clear which is simply given a uh, what do you call it this currently selected 
Oh, I forgot to show you guys that actually. Let's do that quickly. So for example, if I type like six in here and I don't want six anymore, well, I could type another number, but I can also just clear it by hitting Dell and then that way it just goes away. So I don't see it. But notice if I try to hit Dell on one that doesn't have anything penciled in or is one like this, uh, just nothing happens, right? And that's the way it works. Same thing, like I can't change these values. Uh, I can only change ones that aren't already set. So yeah, that's essentially how that works. Um, select, what this does is simply select the square that you press on uh, and that needs to modify a variable for the class and then draw obviously is going to draw all of those grid lines that you were seeing so a certain thickness every three lines and then it's going to draw all of the cubes what else do we have here sketch all this is doing is setting the temporary value for the cube object um, that we like hit a button on <laughs> and then place is setting the permanent value and just making sure that it is valid to do so and this is where we're using the valid and solve methods from the previous script that we wrote uh, update model so the way that this works essentially is we have the board which is what the user sees and then we have a model and the model is the board that we're going to send to the solver to attempt to solve so we need to essentially update this model because we're only going to update this when we need to what do you call it? Uh, attempt to see if the solution can be solved. Uh, I won't. I'm not going to talk about how this works exactly too much, but essentially, it's so that when we send this over to Solver, we can send it a slightly different solution than the actual board that's here, because the board that here has to show us like penciled in values and all that stuff. But when we send it to Solver, we don't care about the penciled in values. We only care about what the actual integer values are. So we need to get all the integer values, which is what it does this from the cube objects, because in the board, we only store cube objects, but we need to actually store integer values to pass that over to our solver method. Uh, I hope that makes sense. And other than that, that's pretty much it for the GUI. I mean, you guys are going to be able to look at all the code on my website. There's a link in the description. Read through. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. And again, I apologize for not making a full tutorial on this, but that would just take way too long. Uh, and I'm kind of want to move on to the next project now. Uh, so with that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you again in another one.